Thank you so much for joining me, John. I have a few questions to benefit from your market insight for the benefit of our website visitors. Such as it is. <laughs> and firstly, I'd like to ask you, what do you think has led to such disparity between the have and the have not fundraising firms? Well, you could take it to two levels. It's, uh, maybe how placement agents go about their work. Let's just talk about how we do our work and then talk about how uh, which clients have been able to raise capital. Then I think in terms of the placement agent role, if that's what you're talking about, um, there's been a real continued evolution. I'd almost call it a revolution over the course of the last three or four years of the differentiates between different uh, placement agents and how they really focus in on what their clients need and that we've set up new systems or developed our old systems in quite a refined way to enable us to really track on a very time specific day way and with open architecture with our clients exactly what all the steps are that are required to get a limited partner uh, to actually sign on the dotted line. We found there can be up to 50 individual interactions with any single limited partner between ourselves and between the GP by the time they make that commitment and plotting that, managing that in a really disciplined way is I think something which um, we think is a differentiator certainly in our approach. So there are differences I think in the way placement agents go about it. In terms of who's getting the money, as always there is the flight to quality people talk about but that doesn't mean to say if you haven't got something really interesting to put forward that you can get that across. So we've been doing a first time fund for example for an Indonesian group. We did a very successful first time fund for an Indian group a couple of years ago. We're doing in infrastructure um, new structures which are absolutely pioneering and are nothing, they've never been seen in private equity, 25 year funds, evergreen funds, um, that are really tailoring the individual um, activities of a GP precisely to what the LPs want. So I think those that are making progress are those that really think about what it is that the limited partners want and make sure that they're skilled up to give that on a genuine basis in a real and trustworthy partnership and then I think anybody who's got something really um, again, credible to offer should succeed. Absolutely, that's definitely what I've been picking up from the majority of presentations. And another message which you helpfully point out to the new crowd today was that making mistakes and admitting your mistakes is key when you're boosting your skill set. Uh, what mistakes have been made in private equity and how is the industry learning from that and moving on? Well, I think a, a generic, um, I think, misdirection is the stickiness of the two and twenty type model. I don't mean necessarily specifically two percent, whether it's one and a quarter, one and a half percent, two, two and a half percent, and then twenty percent going back to the first dollar of profitability in a fund that typically runs for say ten years of the two year extension. I think that's far too narrow for the world in which we now leave, and we live. That, 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 um, one of the difficulties of private equity is proving the value by selling the investment to demonstrate that you've made money. That is um, the reason for that is the mistrust which I think exists between the LPs and the GPs about valuations and they feel somehow you've got to sell it to prove what the value is. We've got over that in infrastructure and infrastructure people really will deal on valuations and then our secondary markets that enable people to come out earlier in longer term funds if they need to come out. So I think we should see some move towards longer term funds, some greater specialisations. I think people like Better Capital with John Milton who's got a public profile, it's again a new way of going about it. Um, it's just a, a general feeling that a model of 10 plus 2 year funds and 2 and 20 was set up 40 years ago is still the dominant model today and if private equity firms look at the companies they're investing in, on the whole the companies they've invested in have got very different models today for their activities that are successful compared to where they were 40 years ago. So maybe a little bit more introspection you know, and thinking about what we can we really do that is a, a, that pushes out those boundaries. How can we take on the public markets which palpably are not delivering in good governance terms and really have something which enables us to maybe do larger deals which means operating with bigger funds but on smaller fees. Maybe it's a 5% carry rather than a 20% carry and the 50 basis points for running a fund but you then have a fund that can really tackle some major public companies and 
maybe we should think about having 50 billion dollar bonds and do 10 deals of 500, uh, 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 5 billion each. Absolutely. Just think outside the box. Yeah.